The fire inside you has to be lit. Velo nitzcha ruach et amud ha'ashan. The wind from the fire, the wind from the, uh, the wind around, did not disperse the vertical column of smoke that came from the altar. Now, the amazing thing that we read every single day in Korbanot. We read about the Korbanot, that they took this incense offering every day. We read it twice or three times a day, twice in Shagrit and once in Mincha. Read the Korbanot. And in the Korbanot, they say that you take this incense offering, the Ketoret, and you put different ingredients together and it creates a smoke that's reach nichoach le Hashem, that's pleasing to Hashem, not pleasing because he's enjoying the smell, but because he's pleasing because you are doing what he says. Now, it says here that it created a pillar. Created a pillar, and this pillar, this pillar, even if strong wind, hurricanes, tornadoes, Irma, whoever showed up, doesn't change. The pillar is like a stone pillar. The pillar is like you have a stone coming from the Bet Mikdash all the way to Shemaim. Nothing can move it. This is one of the miracles. One of the miracles. Even on windy days, the pillar stands still. Now, every day, we read this Korbanot, the incense offering, the Ketoret, but most people miss one of the greatest things that you could ever understand. And this is one of my first big chidushim. And probably still my favorite. Amash, worth coming to the world just to understand what it really means. Now, you read all this Ketoret, you see, Vayomer Hashem el Moshe, Kach lecha salamim natav ushched vechebena salamim ulevana zaka bad barad yeh. Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, in the book of Exodus chapter uh, 3, it says, uh, take for you spices, balm, onkia, galbanum, and all these different types of spices to make an incense offering. And he gives them exact details of who, what, when, and how. Now we are not, we are forbidden from trying. First of all, we don't know how. Even if we have the ingredients, we don't know the exact amounts. Now, for anyone that wants to be a hero and go against the Shem's will and still try to make it, you should know what it also says in the same tefillah, in the same place. It says if anyone makes a mistake with the Ketoret, so anyone who makes a mistake with the Ketoret, it's Karet. It's Din Karet. What's Karet? The same punishment you get for Chilul Shabbat. Same punishment that you get for Chilul Shabbat. You understand? So now, after we have the ingredients, it says, okay, you have the ingredients, good, Chazak Baruch. But it says, Rabbi Natan, Rabbi Yehuda, both have the same opinion. They said, if someone makes a mistake, make a mistake, they forget one of the ingredients. They forget one. One. They one ingredient. Or they don't forget the ingredients. They put all of them. But they put the wrong amount. On one of them, they have all of them. Everything is good, perfect. It's, they need one gram, you put one gram. You do one and a half gram, one and a half gram. Three grams, three, no problem. They, everything is exact. But one of them, it's not one gram, it's like 0.99 of a gram. It's a little tiny mistake. Tiny, tiny. Small. It says, Chayav Mita, death penalty. Oh. We read this in tefillah three times a day. Chayav Mita, just fire the guy. Exactly, why would anybody want to do this job? But on top of that, why are you so harsh? Why are you machmir? Why you guys a satmir? What happened to you? What's going on with you guys? Why kill him? Just tell the guy, listen, thank you very much for your service, you're fired. No severance. We'll try it again. Hey, try again. No, Hashem says no good. Okay, fine, we'll go. I'm not going to kill the guy. I'm not going to kill the guy. But the Chachamim, the Tanaim Akdoshim says, Chayav Mita. Death penalty. Not one opinion. Everyone's opinion. He made a mistake, Miskin. How many times do we make mistakes against Hashem? Every day. Hashem doesn't kill us every day. Baruch Hashem, he's, he's not killing us every day. 
But here you're saying you made a mistake with this. You have a serious problem. Like now I look, it seems like a tiny mistake. But it says it's a big mistake. Such a big mistake. Not only it's din karet, it's chayav mita, death penalty. They killed the guy. Why? So one time, Rabotai, I had this chidush a few years ago. Mamash, worth a million dollars a day. I'll give it to you for free, as long as you remember what it says when you read Korbanot. Now, when they made these incense offering, the Mishnah in Avot, right here, is telling you what's the end product. What's the end product? Smoke came out. Smoke came out, reached the sky. Reached the sky. Wind comes, nothing changes. Wind comes, nothing changes. So now, what does this mean? What is the actual effect of this pillar that we have in Bet HaMikdash? Let's think about it. Who sees it? Who sees this? Three types of people. Three types of people. First guy's in the camp. He's in the desert with everyone else, millions of people in the camp. But you know, sometimes your wife yells at you. The kids don't want to clean the dishes. The, the rabbi uh, gave you a little bit of a uh, musar you didn't like. Sometimes you have some issues. You got fired. You have some little emunah issues. You have some little emunah issues. It says you look up. Oh, Hashem is in control. Why? This is 100% a miracle. So you see Hashem at work. It's not like a hidden miracle or a miracle you have to look for. It's mamash, a miracle in front of your eyes. There's a wind, there's irma, the wind over here, and the thing's not moving. It's Hashem at work. Baruch Hashem, you don't have emunah issues anymore. Why? If Hashem can figure out to get the wind, not to touch the, uh, the, the, the smoke here, and it reaches all the way to the sky, when I can barely light a light at the fire for a barbecue, that I'm sure Hashem can find me a new job. I'm sure Hashem can teach my kids better musar. I'm sure Hashem can uh, calm my uh, rabbi down a little bit to, to, to tell me he loves me more. I'm sure he can figure those other things out. Hashem, I'm sorry for having any doubts. That's the first guy. The second guy, the second guy, second guy saw it. Second guy, Miskin. When he had the emunah issues, he didn't, he didn't look up. He just left. He's like, he's just one of these people, we got so much rage, he said, the hell with it, and he just left. You know one of those people? They, just, they don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it, they just run out of the house. Like a little mouse, they run. Okay, he ran away. But you know, after a while, you run, you get tired. What, what do you do when you get tired? You look back. How long have I gone? He's in the mountains already. He's looking back, and he sees Am Yisrael in the camps, in the desert, millions of them. You can't miss it. See, millions of them over there at the camps, they that. that. And he sees the pillar of smoke. He says, wow, you know what? Judaism is not just about the Jews. Judaism really is about Hashem and me. Judaism does not depend on the Jewish people. Judaism depends on you and Hashem. If you do the will of Hashem, you're okay. Whether they do it or not is not your problem. Of course it says, everyone's responsible for each other. But bottom, bottom line, if they are all the Shaim, they don't want to do anything. They want to wear Abu Dazra on their head. They want to drive on Shabbat. They want to eat non-kosher. They want to steal. They want to do all these different things. You do tshuva, you're okay. you okay. He says, I see the pillar and I realize... It's a miracle. What do you mean a miracle? Hashem is in control. He goes back to the camp. So the first guy had emunah issues. You gave him chizuk. Second guy almost left the derech. He did kiruv. You brought him back. He did tshuva. Who's the third guy that sees it? The goyim. The goyim. The goyim would look from far away and always wonder, why is Hashem? Do so many miracles for Am Yisrael. Why does he make them Nobel Prize winners? Why does he make this little country make so much noise? I mean, technically, there is statistical, statistical error. We should never hear about the Jews. There's, what, 15, 20 million of them? How many? Out of 8 billion people? It's not even a rounding error. When you say 8 billion, you don't literally mean 8 billion. It's probably 7.96 billion. So you round off the extra 40 million to just say 8 billion. 
Meaning that the 20 million is not even a rounding error. You should never hear about any Jew. There's many countries that are much greater in size than Israel. You never heard of them before. Jew, every day is in the news. Every single day we're in the news. Every single day we're in reports. Every single day we achieve something. Every single day we do something somebody knows about and it's reported everywhere. How? The Goim always asking, why are they rich? Why are they smart? Why are they this? Why? Why are they so confident? And then they see the pillar of smoke of the Bet HaMikdash or the tabernacle and say, ah, they're doing the will of Hashem. They're doing the will of Hashem. Look, we're not doing any smoke. What do we do? We're worshipping an idol. We're worshipping a Buddha. We're worshipping uh, some idiot that died 2,000 years ago. What are we doing, the Goim? What are we doing? Nothing. We're investing into businesses, into money, into material, and doing all of the things that God's giving us, we're using against them. The Jews, at least, they're doing the will of Hashem. Look, they made a smoke. They, they have a bet of Mikdash. That's why Hashem does what they want. Hashem gives them a reward. So what do you do now? You had Emunah with the first guy. Kiruv with the second guy. With the Goim, Kiddush Hashem. You sanctified Hashem's name. So here we see three good, amazing things from one Maseh, from the smoke. What's, that's not the Kiddush, though. That's just the reality. What's the chidush? The chidush is what happens when you make a mistake. Why does Rabbi Natan, Rabbi Yehuda say Chayav Mita?